All right, guys, today we're doing something a little bit different. We're doing Packernet After Dark Live, which is going to be weird because I'm talking to two different audiences. To the normal podcast audience, the intro's a little bit weird, and I apologize if things are a little bit weird because I've got, like, a thing recording here. Um, by the way, I guess technically it's not live because we're not doing actual live. But this is a practice run for doing this live. Okay? To all the YouTube people who are new here, have no idea what the heck I'm talking about. This right here, I do this every day. We have a call-in number, which is here, 608-501-0718 is the number to call if you want to call in and be a part of the show. Again, maybe we'll do this live someday. As of right now, what you're calling into is not live. What you're calling into right now is a voicemail, leave a voicemail, et cetera, et cetera. Again, this may change. This guy right up here is the Packernet Podcast where you can listen to this every day in case this thing goes away, but you still find it interesting. Okay, I have been jagging around with these settings for a very long time, and I really hope it works, because if it doesn't, then we are going to waste a lot of time. With that said, I'm going to do as I have done, which I apologize, there's a lot of uh, a lot of calls we're skipping, but I don't want to go through 15 different calls of, here's my prediction for the game, when the game has already happened. So I am going to start at, uh, let's say, Friday at, what time did the game start? Six? We'll, we'll, we'll do, hmm... Well, we'll start with Omar, because he was at 6-11. So, we'll, we'll, we'll see how this goes, man. I don't know. What's going on, so Omar? Five, five, how going you on, doing Mike? with your early complaint call? Uh -oh. Like, Jordan Love, what, what's going on? Now, hopefully, when y'all hear this, he came back through a touchdown pass first play of the game. But... If you overthrowing Luke Musgrave, you ain't throwing that close to the ground for him to catch it. You know, closer to the receiver. It doesn't make any sense. Like, it's just beyond me. The, the tallest people on your team, you overthrowing him? Come on. You know, and then if he, he daggone could have got a touchdown the day before. I said, I'm just so out of it. So I t be quiet. I don't want to say what I said. Anyway, uh, go pack, go. Everything else, I uh, hope y'all having a great day. All right, bye. Yeah, so I think um, like most days, we got off to a slow start with Jordan Love, and then things picked up. So I'm sure I, it looks like you call back here in about uh, 10 minutes, so we'll see if you had a change of, of tune or not. But but we started off slow again, right? There was the Christian Watson down the down the left sideline. You got Luke Musgrave. You missed him pretty wide. Then you got the tip ball, which whether you want to blame him for that or not, you know, it is what it is. That's up to you. The only thing I'll say, I saw, I forget who it was, a former quarterback of some stripe. He talked about the play, and it was interesting if you actually look at, I was kind of ticked because he had so many different camera angles. Next Gen Stats has got this unbelievable database of of things that that he's using, and I'm like, oh, you got, I got to find a job with for these people, which I'll never get. But man, that'd be crazy because the database was wild. But they had a bunch of different camera angles, and one of them was looking dead at Jordan Love, and um, with that camera angle, it showed that he was, which we've seen several times, he's looking off safeties and whatnot. In this case, he's looking off a linebacker. And um, one of the best parts about that is that he immediately knew where the ball was going to go by virtue of where his eyes are. As soon as he got the ball, you know, you, you always think about when they get the ball, you're kind of like going through like, oh, where, where am I going to throw? Where am I going to throw it? He knew immediately where he was going to throw it, right? Single high, which means I'm going to the left side over here. But he didn't even look over to the left. So... He stares over in this direction, which if you're, you can actually see me if you're on uh, YouTube, by the way, Packer and I podcast on YouTube, if you want to check that out. Anyways, you're looking over essentially kind of straight ahead, but a little bit off to the right because you're looking off this linebacker because you know the whole time you're trying to freeze that linebacker because you're going to throw it over to his right, your left, to Luke Musgrave. The problem is it was, it was basically a no-look pass. I don't know if you saw that video or not, but it was essentially a no-look pass, which the problem is that's unnecessary, right? Luke Musgrave has enough speed that you could have turned your eyes and thrown it, even if the linebacker was tiff, tipped off by that. He's not going to turn and run and be able to catch up. No chance. So, again, everything process-wise was great. But the fact that you're freezing the linebacker for so long that you're trying to throw a no-look pass, which is completely unnecessary, 
because you've got a tight end that's just wide open and you're you're putting in jeopardy a really really big play to your one of your biggest playmakers is not great but um you know, it is one of the things that kind of gives me optimism. It, it, at least it's better than the alternative, which is as you and I both were watching this, Omar, immediately we both looked at that and just thought, man, this freaking guy, man, it, this just isn't going to work, is it? Like, this is just how it's going to go. Like, you you can't hit a wide open Luke Musgrave. Like, give me a break, man. But seeing that, it's kind of like, all right, cool. Like, no more no-look passes maybe, and then we can move on and never do that again. That would just be fantastic, actually. Hey, what's going on? Open my five five. How you doing? Excuse me for my last call. I was a little out of it. Um, um, anyway, so I just this Jordan Love just finished his sequence or second go attempt, and you know he got touchdown. I want to talk and make sure the kicker make it all right. Cause that's what I was about to say. Anyway, I just wait. um, and I want to give his grade. You know, because basically everybody know the first drive they was terrible. He was terrible. Second drive, some people might not say he was terrible. I'm going to have to give him, like, a D plus. Like, you got a touchdown, you know. I, like, I, I still feel like he could, like, under-throw some balls. Um, I'm, I'm, let us get a Kirk Cousins and see what we could do. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's my floor. Like, and maybe that's a high floor. It's probably a high floor, but dang it. You sat for three years. You was a first round pick. Kirk Cousins was, a, was like a third round pick, third, fourth round pick. So I'm expecting that from you and that hopefully we could build a team to carry you the rest of the way. So get us through the first three quarters and the defense finished the last fourth quarter whatever you know what i'm saying like that's that's what i'm hoping anyway go pack go hope everybody's enjoying the game and hopefully it has a good outcome even if we lose at least have the great players who's supposed to be good be good all right go. yeah i mean I, I i wasn't really sure how everybody would react to what i had to say about jordan love yesterday i'm still not entirely sure i'm guessing it's mostly going to be negative but you know look at the bottom at the end of the day I don't know if I'd give him a D or whatever, but I can't be too critical because what I said going into it was I don't need to see the wow throws. I want Jordan Love to just lead an efficient offense down the field and score. And that's what he did. It was nothing flashy. So I can't then turn around and say, yeah, but they were dink and dunk passes to get you down the field. And then you threw a, a short little touchdown pass. That's what you asked for, right? The first one wasn't great, granted. But it wasn't anything necessarily horrific either. So it still was inconsistent, which I didn't want. But we still got to see that drive down and that touchdown. So I, I, I'll give him half credit for that. But but you're right. I mean, there's, there's nothing here to do backflips about. I, I mean, you go on social media and you see all this like, oh, man, this is the this is it. This is the future. He's the guy. I mean, okay, dude. I mean, <laughs> you know, and I don't know if you're watching any other uh, any other games, but. I mean, he's going to end up being like the 45th highest graded quarterback because there's 500 quarterbacks and half of them are lighting up the NFL right now. Um, and half of the ones that are lighting up the NFL right now are going to be out of the NFL in about 14 minutes. So, I mean, I don't want to be overly critical, but there just, wa there just wasn't that much there. It was very simple passes and... Um, there was zero pressure the entire day on Jordan Love. I mean, officially, I checked the statistics, zero pressure. So with no pressure in his face and with mostly wide open receivers, he was able to move the ball efficiently down the field. And hopefully that's all we need to ask from him this year. Hopefully we can continue with solid weapons and great play calling and just an efficient quarterback to get us down the field. That's all we really need. If we can get a couple little uh, flashy Mahomesy Rodgersy passes mixed in, cool. But... That's that's all I can that's all I can do with that performance. It was it was fine. But that's it. It wasn't, you know, I'm not going to start convulsing over it necessarily. Maybe I will. We'll see how it goes. Hey Ryan, this is Aaron. I don't like home before the game and said not to overreact and I'm not overreacting. But 
I'm calling right after Romeo Dobbs scored the touchdown. Mm -hmm. And things are looking good because I like the game plan. It's basically like kind of like a poking the bear method of like try a deep shot. Does it work? No? Okay, this was the first guy. Does it work? No? Let's pull it back into a couple quick shots and see what we can do short game. And then try it again? Nope, not working. Let's keep pulling it back. And run the ball and do a quick screen and or do a quick pass out to Watson for the first down. Anyways, it's really good to see that where it's it's kind of like an adjustment of like testing the waters and um Jordan Love is looking good. He's got the throws. He the way that like there was one play, I think it was to Watson where he like wrapped like not like curved it around a defender, but it was like almost the same one that you know how he threw it like between like around Devondre Campbell to get to Aaron Jones mm-hmm. in that one or was it family night, I think. And it almost looked like that where he like somehow knew the receiver was there and it's like threw it almost like the old movie like wanted um with James McAvoy and Angelina Jolie, like curves the bullet around the defender. And so there are the throws that are there. I like the slow game plan of, like, test the waters, pull it back when it's not working, and then try it again. Kind of like just poking the bear and seeing how far we can go and say, nope, okay, we're not there. Let's do it. I like it so far. It's only been two drives, and I'm having to assume that Jordan Love is not going to play again. Um, so maybe we'll see Sean Clifford. And But the defense, too, is looking really good. Um, but anyways... So I'm going to just watch the game now and not call again. And because you're probably getting a billion calls right now. So, um, okay. Have a good night. Happy Packers preseason. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I can't know what was going on inside the headset, but one thing piggybacking off of what you said about, you know, sort of changing things up. The good thing is that we have the personnel to do it. It's one thing to say, okay, that's not working. Let's pivot. But what if you can't pivot? What do you do in that situation? What about, um, this is live, but thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Um, we, we have the personnel to be able to do it. Whether you want to go run game, whether you want to go deep, whether you want to go intermediate. Um, so, so, so that is one of the things that I said we were going to be able to do. That is nice that we can now do that. Um, as far as the defense, I do like the aggression and, um, we'll see how that pans out on Sunday, if that ends up biting us in certain situations, but it didn't in this game. And that was fun to watch. Um, the, the constant pressure the quarterback was under and not really sacrificing, for example, the run game. That was really great to see. But again, is that going to be able to hold up? I don't know. Hey, Ryan, it's Jersey Mike. Uh, so we're we're just after the second touchdown in the game right now. Um, <clears throat> real two, quick, two comments. Uh, Jordan Love, I'm going to give him like an uh, A minus. Like I'm talking about a nine or yeah, like a ninety point zero, like slightly worse, and he would have been a B. And the only reason I don't have it as a B, and people might question that, is that. He, he, I, I feel like Jordan Love is a different kind of baller. He didn't make critical errors. He's more looking at. He didn't, he didn't put the ball up for grabs, um, necessarily. That, that deep shot to Watson, I think Watson could have throttled down a little bit and gone after that ball. Um, that was a ball that Watson could have come down with. Watson has to work harder on that. And I've seen that a few times from Watson. So maybe that's something concerning. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's my, that's my take on Jordan Love. Uh, I, I don't want to talk more about it, but read, read. before we move on, the the only issue I have with giving that high of a grade for that is there's there's not a lot of room to go up from there. What did he what what how, what did he have stat line like sixty yards and a touchdown or something? What, what if he had two hundred yards and, and two touchdowns? What if there was a, a deep? I mean, there wasn't one. Let's bring up the buzzword, wow throw. I mean, yeah, we, we can't give the guy an A when nothing really happened. 
As far as the Christian Watson thing, I, I don't think throttling down would do anything. I mean, it, it was Christian Watson got sandwiched between two defenders and it got the ball got swatted out of the air by the safety. So you can throttle down all you want, but you know the the safety got there. So I mean, I, I'm not trying to dump on Love, but there there wasn't the best I can give him is a C. There was nothing bad. I mean, I shouldn't even say there's nothing bad. It was the the I'll take away the Musgrave overthrow with the touchdown pass, which I also think was a little bit underthrown, but whatever. Um, we'll say they cancel out, and it was just average. It was just a C. Um, but, again, I'm not necessarily mad at it. I just, I, I can't do backflips over some dink and dunk passes, uh, a, a, an errant throw to Christian Watson that shouldn't have been thrown, a pass that got batted, and, a, and missing a wide-open six foot six tight end down the field. There's no way in the world I can get anywhere close to an A based on that. I mean, we've watched Rodgers and Favre for 30 years. We've been watching Pat Mahomes for I don't know how long. We've seen all these great quarterbacks. I mean, I've seen Jordan Love do amazing things. I can't give him an A for this. I just, I, I can't do that. Holy smoke, you do it, dude. I am so excited for this guy. He's, he's going to be electric. He he is he is the third receiver in this bunch. He is going to do some amazing things. Let me tell you. I mean, not only to go up and high point that ball, that was great. You know, from Clifford, but then, but then it, he has the DVD, and DVD's got to hold him or will be on him to even have a chance at getting the ball from a fifty-fifty ball, Jaden Reed. And what does Reed do after the flag gets thrown? He freaking acts like the ref and does a little dance and starts throwing the flag. I mean, dude, I love <laughs> the attitude. Awesome. I love let, – let's call it moxie. Uh, I like it. Uh, let's get more of that. Hell yeah. Do we have, like, Jaden Reed as Jair Alexander, but of the offense? I, I would be. like that. I would really appreciate that. We got Watson, who's the big star, right? You got Dubs, who's the guy, like – you know, I'm kind of just doing my thing and grind, and Jaden Reed's the jokester. I like it. I like it. Let's go. Go, Pat, go. Yeah, I mean, it, it was really cool, and I, I, I don't remember. Did I just talk about it on here, or was that – I think it was on tomorrow's podcast. But watching the Titans game, the Bears game, whatever, kind of made me appreciate the Packers game even more because I, I – I'm sitting there watching the Bears look like a really good football team on the back of a Titans team that is the most incompetent team I've ever seen in my life. And I was getting real upset until I realized it's preseason. This is what happens in preseason. Everybody sucks. And so the Titans just looking like they're complete lost puppy idiots makes sense. But we didn't really see that with the Packers. I mean, these guys look like actual professional football players. Like you said, with, with Jaden Reed and his swagger. And um, just just going up and getting the 50-50 balls and guys getting open. And just, I mean, everything about it was really, really, it didn't look like a rookie. He didn't look like a rookie. He didn't look like he was lost. He didn't look like he didn't know what he was doing. He didn't look like he hasn't been in the league for a long time. I'm not going to say he's looked like a premier receiver, although I don't know what else he could have really done in that game. But, um, I mean, he he just... It just felt like a smooth operation, and I think I, I take it for granted that that's how the preseason should look, because that's absolutely not how the preseason should look. It should be ugly and stupid, and everybody's making mistakes, and everybody's just... You just want to cut half the team, basically. Hey, right, it's Jersey Mike again, so at halftime. Um, so you had that question there, you know, like, who, who are guys looking, you know, to have the best game? And I said Sean Clifford. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and you said Lil Brett Favre. Yep. Now, w was there specifically a reason for that? Um, because before before now, I had never even thought about that. I, I watched a little bit of Clifford. I'll be honest, I didn't watch too much because I don't. I didn't. I didn't necessarily care about uh about the second string quarterback. But um, uh, what what do you know? <laughs> How? Because. Two interceptions and a touchdown and, you know, completely forgetting that you threw some interceptions before and still ripping it like a gunslinger. I mean, that that's some Brett Favre levels of, of insanity, and I'm here for it. If you're a ba like if you're a backup Clifford, I like that. I like that attitude. Just, hey, you throw an interception, forget about it. What are you going to do? 
<laughs> anyway, go back though. JC Mike. Um, it's entirely possible I'd heard somebody else say that, and I subconsciously have just been calling him that, but to my knowledge, that isn't the case. I, I've been saying, like I said, since we got him, I think you can even go back to the live stream where we drafted him, and everybody was upset about the draft pick, and, and live during the stream, because these drafts take 45 hours, I just pulled up a little bit of Sean Clifford and started watching him. Let the, let, let the guys do some talking while I sit here and watch the guy for a little bit, and... um I really liked him. I, w- I was surprised by how much I liked him based on what I saw. And it was the the one thing that made me think of Brett Favre was his toughness. He's known to be a very tough quarterback. He's very gritty. He he, he gets his nose in there. I mean, even even as a runner, he'll he'll drop his head and just plow right through some people. Um, but he's also, I mean, I, I, there was one play. I don't remember exactly what happened. They were down by the goal line, but it was sort of one of those. He's running. And then there's like a little sidearm flip kind of thing over into the end zone. And that, that might not be necessarily Brett Favre-ish, but it, it's just sort of that playmaker. Like you, you're never out of the play. It's just backyard football. And you add in the tough and grittiness. And then the fact that he's, he's you know, a little bit careless along with being impressive. Brett Favre is, is just the guy that always comes to mind for me. And I, I even said, I mean, there was that, but also even prior to, I was excited to watch Clifford because I think he's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And he was. And I, and I just think that's who Sean Clifford is. So I don't want to say I don't understand the the hate for Sean Clifford, although to some degree I I, I don't understand it. But, um, I mean, I know Jake Shavink had pointed out some stuff about him. Like, he'll, he'll drop his eyes and start running before his guys even come out of their breaks. And I went back and watched, and sure enough, I saw him do that a ton of times. So, I mean, he is, he's got some serious issues, and he's not going to be a starting quarterback. But I don't think anybody drafted where he's drafted is, is going to be that. So... Um, you take the playmaking ability, you take the toughness, you take the intelligence, and it's like, heck yeah, dude. I, I'm I'm super pumped for him to be a backup quarterback for us for who knows how long, I guess. Um, but is it possible I ripped that off from somewhere? Maybe, but I am absolutely going to claim credit for that. Hey there. Uh, this is, uh, I think, Washington Metro. Washington although my name Metro. is Gabriel. It was just a long time ago I called. What's up, Gabriel? Uh, and I was... Riding on the Washington Metro away from a uh, game last <laughs> That's season. That's how you that get was, your name. <laughs> uh, pretty depressing. But I'm watching the first preseason game, feeling pretty hyped for the season, and I'm absolutely loving watching Valentine, yeah, a couple dude. of these other players. Just good to call back in, and uh, I think I'll uh, be calling back in a little bit more over the season. Good. All right. Bye. Yeah, Carrington Valentine was our second highest graded player, had an 89 coverage grade. Um, he was targeted the second most, I think, of anybody on the team. Uh, let me just see here. Targets. Yeah, six targets, only two receptions. Of the four that were not caught, there was a pick and two pass breakups, passer rating of 2.8. But if that wasn't enough, he also had a 71.3 run defense grade on his eight run defense snaps and a 77.8 tackling grade. He had... Um, actually led the team in tackles with four tackles. So he, he he dominated in every facet of the game. Um it's just it's just exciting to see. And it's it's also exciting because this dude's gonna make the 53. It's exciting because he's a draft pick. You know, it's it's not just like that ninth guy down buried at the bottom of the depth chart. I won't name other names. Maybe it'll come up later, but guys that you know like I'm I'm happy for him, but they're still not gonna make it. Carrington Valentine's gonna make it. Um, and as of right now, as I've said, I, I think week one, if Razul goes down, Carrington is coming in. So I'm happy for him. I had a great time watching him, but it's also fantastic from a standpoint of we legitimately might need this guy to step up and, um, for him to put on that kind of a performance. Holy cow. That, that was really, really incredible stuff. What's going on? This old my firefighter. How you doing? This will be my last call of night. I'm not going to wait till the game is over. I got, uh, Two players of the games, good and bad. Uh, good, you got Wilson, this running back. Yeah. Who uh, I've been a little late on the podcast, but I think he just came out of nowhere. And uh, he's doing his thing. And he he making me feel like Tyler Goodson who? Like he, <laughs> and, and I like that Goodson played bad, but yeah, right. he's just killing it right now. So if he, if he do it again, it's, I think it's going to be hard. He's going to get picked up. I don't know if he's going to make play practice squad playing like that, if he keeps that kind of play up that he's doing. And then- 
Yeah, so Wilson was uh, six attempts, 111 yards, 18.5 yards per attempt, two touchdowns, had a 93.5 PFF grade, 93.2 rushing grade, a um, bunch of other stats in there, including his how many broken tackles and, and breakaway plays he had. But that was the guy that I was hoping not to have to mention probably isn't going to make the 53. I, I do think he's going to squeeze onto the practice squad, though. Um, which is cool because I, I I don't know if I would have even put him on the practice squad. In fact, I don't I don't know. I I I got to think about that a little bit more. It's tough because you think about our our running backs, right? Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon, obviously. If you go three running backs, who's it going to be? It's probably Patrick Taylor. For whatever reason, no offense to Patrick Taylor. Tyler Goodson might just get straight up cut, which sucks because I've. We've all kind of been a huge fan of Tyler Goodson for a while. I feel like he's the best runner. I mean, we'll see what Emmanuel Wilson's got to bring, but the guy's done nothing but been a great player for a while. But it just feels like, you know, we, we got Lou Nichols and Emmanuel Wilson and, and some guys that are kind of coming up that we're going to give some more opportunities to. But, okay, so what about Lou Nichols? Well, he's not going to make the 53 because we're not. I don't think we're going to carry four running backs. So he would have to go to the practice squad? I mean, I would have thought Lou Nichols would have been on the 53 just because we drafted him, but he's been injured this whole time and hasn't really done much, and I don't think you trust him as a receiver, as a blocker, and on special teams, which the Packers have already said is the most important piece for that number three running back spot. So he's practice squad. So is it Lou Nichols and Emmanuel Wilson? I don't know. And you could say that that's an easy decision, but there's only so many spots on the practice squad. And... um I'm already doubling up in different positions, and I also want to keep a kicker because I want to get a new kicker and put our kicker in the practice squad. <laughs> My practice squad is bursting at the seams a little bit, so I don't know, man. I, I'd have to think about it a little more. I'm sure some people have some uh, thoughts on what's going to happen with Emmanuel Wilson, and who knows? He he might actually, you never know, make the 53. I don't think that's very likely, but you got to understand, he's he's a 2023 undrafted free agent. He's a rookie. He might be a stud, and he's 6'1", 226. That has got Brian Gutekunst written all over it. So he's got great size, great vision, right? We know he's got some power to him. I don't exactly know what he can do uh, as far as receiving, blocking, and um, special teams. But, you know, I mean, we, we talk about Lou Nichols as though he's he's a lock. Well, he's a seventh-round pick. Emmanuel Wilson's a free agent. It's not that big of a difference between them. So I don't know, man. I'm, I'm excited for him. But um, let's just say I think he's going to have to keep that up more consistently. If he if he does that again, then I think we have to have a more serious conversation about, you know, maybe he should stay on the 53, especially when you when you factor in. And again, I don't mean to be rude to Patrick Taylor, but what is it Patrick Taylor brings that is so unbelievable that taking a flyer on a guy like Emmanuel Wilson, we would be losing out on? Aside from, you know, he knows the offense and things like that, which, of course, is important. But, hey, we're, we're, we got Jaden Reed. We got, uh, you know, Luke Musgrave. We got a bunch of guys. We got a kicker that, for crying out loud, we're probably just going to have to, you know, grind our teeth and, and through that process. We got a bunch of young guys that are going to figure it out as we go along. Plus, Emmanuel Wilson's not going to play. He's a number three. So, I don't know. I, I guess I haven't fully fleshed out my thoughts on Emmanuel Wilson. Um I, I I'm I'm at the point right now where where I'm in the don't overreact phase, but we'll see what happens because again if that happens again, I'm gonna have no choice but to overreact. With Sean Clifford, uh, I definitely got respect for Sean Clifford. He's he's better than I thought. I know he's not a finished product yet because yeah. he missed some like passes. You feel like a hey, you're starting. Well, I wouldn't say starting, but you're in the NFL. The person open. You ain't supposed to be missing that. But it's okay. For the very first game ever playing, he's playing pretty good. So yeah. I'm actually happy. And I was shocked that they let him play, probably because they're trying to test out the other wide receivers. Um, now, bad players of the game that were bad, the kicker, I just, oh. I don't know if I'm going to spend the rest of my time talking about how bad this kicker is. He's, it's kind of like you say, they tell you, they show you who you are, believe them. Yeah. Like he's yeah. been like this all camp. This I, I, he was like this in college. He wasn't a good college kicker. This this is, I mean, Rich Bisacci is that girlfriend that's going to fix him, you know. And uh, it ain't happening, man. 
I mean, it's just, I mean, two missed extra points. Freaking good Lord. I would hate for us to be a seven, six or seven win team. Right. When we could have been a 10, 12 win team and we lost it because of the kicker. Like this got to get rectified. We got to bring somebody in, even if it's another rookie, just somebody to make him care because he he don't even look like he care kicking the football. Like it just, I don't, it doesn't matter. Like it's nothing. Like it's looking bad. You can't keep missing extra points. That's some bull crap. Yep. So that needs to get fixed, pronto. Um. Also, hey, he played so bad. I forgot who my other player that played bad. So yeah, I mean. And I, I talk about this, I think, yesterday's podcast, whatever. Sorry if you can hear the stupid dog barking. Every once in a while, he's just like, I'm going to bark constantly. And I don't know why he does that. He won't do it if I'm upstairs because he will, you know. I, I, I don't tolerate that. But <laughs> when I'm downstairs, he's like, I'm just going to sit here and bark like an idiot. I, the, the one thing I noticed is Rich Passaccia absolutely tore him up. There was not a whole lot of like tap patting him on the back and just being like, oh, you're okay and all this stuff or, or blaming it on somebody else. Rich, Rich Bisaccia got in that dude's face and um, he looked like, I mean, his dad just yelled at him. You know, I mean, he, he put his head down and he was blushing and he looked like he was going to cry. So it's it's a pretty bad situation with Anders Carlson right now. Um, but it's, it's also, like I said, I, I legitimately don't know what to do about that situation. I don't know. I mean, do, do you just cut bait already after just a handful of kicks with the guy that you drafted as a long-term investment that rich Passaccia, who is your assistant head coach said, I want this guy. I've known him since he was a kid. I'm, I, 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 I know I can fix some of his issues. I just need some time. You're the GM. You're going to come up and just say, Nope, we're done. I mean, at some point you have to do that. Are you going to do it already? And then if you do it, what do you do? Who do you go get? I don't know. Maybe Mason doesn't want to come back. I don't I don't know the situation. I just know we are in a crap situation right now with Anders Carlson and I have almost no faith. You can say don't overreact to preseason all you want. I have almost no faith that this gets fixed. I'm not saying ever, but come week 1, you expect this guy to make all the kicks? Do you can you freaking oh, hmm. can you imagine the Bears game comes down to a kick to Anders Carlson and it's like a 31 yard field goal and he shanks it. I'm I'm done if we lose to the Bears because of a missed kick. I'm I'm that's 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 when I that's over the line for me. It was. I, I'm trying to remember in my mind. Um so I just do another one. Wicks did a good job. He looked like he's doing his thing. Um I forgot it was one more player that played bad, but the kicker the kicker was good enough to count against two as as two people. Like that's how bad he was. Yeah, we literally just cannot mess this season up because of the damn kicker. Oh, right. excuse my language. It's my bad. Uh, but we we can't do that. That's that's just trifling. Um. Anyway, go pack, go. Oh, I missed it. That was close. <laughs> Anyways, uh, why don't we take a break right here? We'll come back and see what Nico has to say. Hey Ryan, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Uh, this is uh, Nico. Sure is. Just left the establishment that I was watching the game at. Um, right. I think the fourth quarter is still going on. Looks like they were just going to run the ball and eat the time, so I didn't really want to stay. I'm actually riding my bike back. Uh, so the. Uh, you the love looked pretty clean, you know. Oh, yeah. Um nothing too amazing, you know. He didn't throw for three hundred yards, but <clears throat> he had kind of one little stinker pass to Musgrave, I think it was. Yep. Over it was just a hair. I wonder why Watson floated a little. Um but you know he had a really good sidearm, I think the Dobbs to get us like a first down. He had to show some really good touch on that floater for the TV. So uh, I'm I'm not uh, optimistic still, you know. Uh, just pleased with how he ran everything. Um, the first team defense looked pretty tight. Yep. They seemed to have. I mean, I I was in a pretty busy place, so I don't get a chance to see everything. 
But, um, man, stuff seemed to be locked down pretty good. Um, I don't remember a lot of runs and passes during the first team plays. Uh, so, uh, very impressed with that. Um, I made some notes. I am, okay. however, riding my bike down the street. So, do your um, best. Mr. Locke Van Ness Monster, he, huh? he, uh, had a couple, a couple good streets plays. He had a, a really good pressure up the center. And then he, uh, for future reference, Nico, you could just call me when you get home. Be fine. Kicked the running back outside, and he got tackled for loss. So that was pretty good. Um, to my knowledge, Ethan has not allowed a TV yet today. That's good. And uh, Clifford, who cares? You know, what I mean, <laughs> he literally looks like Brett Favre. <laughs> he's got to throw on interceptions, and then he's throwing dimes to guys barely open in the center of the field. You know, so uh, whatever. <laughs> He'll get hopefully better. And who's this Wilson guy? Uh, you know, he, uh, with his first touchdown, he, he ran, I, I could see he really read his block good. And then he, I know it's against the third and fourth stringers, but whatever. Still gotta do it. And I'm not gonna like that guy, so we'll see how he goes. So, uh, hey, go Pat, go and wait for next week. Peace. Yeah, interestingly enough, I'll piggyback on the Wilson thing because I'm not entirely sure what else was going on on that bike ride, but um, I hadn't really thought to do this before. I didn't have a ton of notes on Emmanuel Wilson through training camp up to this point, but here is what I have so far. Um, July 29th being the first note. Emmanuel Wilson with burst inside. He's a big back with a little wiggle. Fun to watch. Colby Wooden just beat Sean Ryan and Emmanuel Wilson for a sack on Magoo. Impressive play by Wooden. Not great in terms of pass blocking ability, I guess. Really nice inside run by Emmanuel Wilson, who takes a big shot from Shamar Jean Charles. Cox pressure, but Clifford finds Wilson stealing deep down the right sideline, just slightly overthrown incomplete. We've got a live tackling period for the young guys. Emmanuel Wilson with an awesome freaking run, breaking a bunch of tackles. Best run of camp, fun play. I mean, maybe I'd, I, I'd just been missing it. We've all just been missing it. Best play of camp, apparently, was Emmanuel Wilson. He got wide open down the down the right sideline, and the pass was just missed, right? First, first note on him was a really nice run. Um, next note says, Emmanuel Wilson is a really nice find as an undrafted free agent running back. He just hauled in a nice catch from a flat from Magoo for a touchdown in the red zone. Been impressed with Wilson as a ball carrier tonight. Showcase good vision, finding running lanes. These are all different days. Wilson runs for a few yards. Well played by McDuffie. So not a ton of notes, but again, been kind of missing it as I've just been kind of cut it, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. When you see it in a line, he's really been impressive all through camp. There's not a lot of notes because he hasn't had a lot of opportunities because he's way down the depth chart. However, here's a question. What happens when they start putting him with the ones or with the twos? Right? And think about it. Lou Nichols and Tyler Goodson are both injured right now. So Patrick Taylor and Emmanuel Wilson, aside from Nate McCrary, are the only guys there. Why would you not give Wilson an opportunity? And if he starts tearing it up with with Jordan Love, right? I mean, if he, if he starts getting some runs against the number one defense or against the number two defense or whatever, that again, that's when we got to start taking this a little bit more seriously. So. Um, yeah, I'm. I uh, like I said, I hadn't really thought of doing that until right now because I just assumed there's probably not much there. This is the only time he's really done anything, which is why we shouldn't take it too seriously. But uh, apparently, he's been kind of uh, darling of camp already. Hey, it's Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy. Um, as everybody is, I'm very, very thrilled tonight. I am sitting here smiling like a Cheshire cat, and uh, I gotta say, uh, it left a pretty nice. I think nice message uh, a little bit ago, but it might get lost in the shuffle here. So I'm just going to say the theme of that a little bit because it applies uh, for this evening. Uh, this, is, this is a goddamn team. This is a team with a lot of guys all coming up together. And it's very, very exciting. Um, you know, they're going to be rough here and there. They're going to make right. some mistakes. But, uh, you know, even Sean Clifford's doing stuff. 
it was, it was a good, good time. Um, and something that just occurred to me, ironically, does it seem a little bit like this Packers team has kind of the aura of what last year's Jets team was supposed to be? You know, with like everybody pulling together in the defense and like a bunch of no names and, 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 but then they didn't have a quarterback, right? And, uh, and now, and we've got the young wide receivers and, uh, it just feels like we could maybe pull off the thing that ironically the Jets were trying to pull off last year and couldn't do. Um, anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, I could not be more excited. Go Pack Go. Yeah, I mean, th- that is one of the things that was exciting about it overall. Not only just the general competence of it all, but it really did feel like a, as weird as it sounds because it's hard to quantify, it felt like a young team that was just having fun. It it, it might not have been perfect and there might have been some mistakes here and there. And maybe that's that's sort of the difference between an Aaron Rodgers run football team and let's be honest, pretty much any other football team ever. An Aaron Rodgers football team was 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 all about precision and perfection. That was it. And now it's like some stuff sucked, but somehow that was still awesome. And like, there was a lot of bad, but we freaking dominated them. <laughs> like, how can you kind of suck at times, but also just freaking dominate? Like, we, we, Clifford threw two picks, including a pick six. You know, uh, I mean, Jordan, again, he he kind of missed some passes, and the defense certainly made some mistakes here and there. Not not a ton, but but um, it didn't matter, man. It just, I mean, the, the, first of all, the guys didn't give up, which I'm not used to. The Packers, usually, you throw a pick six, or you make a mistake here or there, or there's an overthrow, it's like, we're, we're kind of screwed. Like, oh, no. Because, I mean, if, if Rodgers is not perfect, then it's like, well, we're screwed, right? I mean, Rodgers overthrew a pass. Oh, he's off. So the whole team's going to be off. The energy's going to be off. Everything's off. This day is going to suck. That didn't happen. It was just a play. It was just one play, right? There was an overthrow. We punted. Oh, crap. We come back. We score a touchdown. Sean Clifford throws a pick six. Comes back. He throws another pick. Comes back, touchdown. Apparently, one thing doesn't have to mean the other. But yeah, I mean, you know, you got Valentine out there having fun. You got Dallin Levitt out there having fun. And, you know, guys on the sideline just having a good time. And, you know, and this isn't a shot at what we used to have. I mean, guys used to have fun here. It's just, it's a different energy. And um, it's fun. And you're right. They they do feel like a, a, a team. They're a bunch of young guys that are new to this and they're coming up together and they're just having a good time. And, and it, you know, the other thing that is loosely related to this, but maybe not entirely that I did mention on the podcast that I found shocking was when I saw the tweet about Emmanuel Wilson, how he lost his dad, I think it was 14 years ago. And immediately I thought, you got to be kidding me. Emmanuel Wilson lost his dad. Jordan Love lost his dad. Jaden Reed lost his dad. Tucker Craft lost his dad. That's that's now four guys. But the, the the even crazier thing about that that just clicked in that moment was the actual tweet was about how Aaron Rodgers had gone and essentially talked to um Emmanuel Wilson about that touchdown, one of the touchdowns. I think he had two in in the on the day. But just told him like, you know, he knew how how important of a moment that was. And it dawned on me, Aaron Jones just lost his dad. So you know, they, they, in a weird way, there's just a lot of different things. I mean, it's, it's, there's the age, there's the fact that they're all kind of new and coming up in this, but there's also just the adversity and things like that, that these guys have in common that, um, I mean, it's, 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 it's a very unusual thing that so many people have in common, but, um, I do have to assume that it, that it, I hate to say it helps. It's, it's such a stupid thing to say, but it's it's good that there's so many young guys that have so much in common and um you know having gone through that adversity also just helps me to realize that these are not the kinds of guys that are going to take this for granted i guess is the best way that i can say that but no it is you're absolutely right and it's weird because again some of this is hard to quantify but you can just feel it and every single person like i said I was watching the game and I was saying to myself, this is the best preseason game I think I've ever watched. I've never had this much fun watching a preseason game. I didn't realize everybody was feeling that. And again, that's kind of the point. We all just kind of felt it. 
yes, there were things that were cool, like all the touchdowns and stuff that was great and the interceptions and, and there were good things happening um, that made it fun to watch. But I, I genuinely think there was just a feel throughout on a play-to-play basis, just watching these guys play, watching them compete. I mean, we've had guys have good days in preseason, you know, no-name guys like Micah Abernathy and whatnot that absolutely blew things up last year, but it didn't lend itself to, oh, man, this is so exciting. So, um, yeah, it's it's a it's a very cool team dynamic that we have right now. Also, in case that other call gets dumped, I want to make my main point here. Okay. Um, it might. This team... This is my bold prediction. This team, in its tenure, in the love era, whatever that is, I mean, the teams that change every year. So when I say this team, I don't mean like this year, but I mean this generation will win more Super Bowls than Rodgers. That is my prediction. That is my bold prediction. Uh, I just want to be on the record. Maybe it'll get on twice. Go back, go. I mean, I I, maybe – I, I mean, obviously, the 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 money is on that not being the case, but um, I mean, because obviously, even if it's a really good quarterback and a really good team, even one is uh, is a big deal. But um, I don't know. I, I I my mind hasn't even honestly gone there in terms of Super Bowls. I, I'm I'm happy to see things coming together. I'm excited to see the young guys starting to gel. I'm beyond excited at the the overall competence of our weapons group as far as the the running backs and the wide receivers and the tight ends. Um and then the the certain aspects of Jordan Love in relation to those weapons is encouraging as well. And seeing the defense look as though it it hopefully is going to be better than what it was last year and closer to its potential, you know, closer to top five than, than, you know, being outside of the top 20, like I believe they were last year. So, um, yeah, again, I haven't taken it there, but I'm, I'm just excited to see it all come together. And it does seem like there are certain things that are very, very positive about this unit. And, uh, I'm still not quite ready to give us a, a record prediction, but, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how things progress. I'm very curious to see how things go with Jordan Love because, you know, again, that was that was just it was good in some ways and not in others. So let's see if we can kind of open up some different avenues. Let's see what happens when he gets a little bit more pressure in his face, a little bit more adversity, maybe a couple a little bit more of a down the field focused offense as opposed to a shorter passes kind of a thing. Um just just more information, but no, I'm 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 excited about it. I'm happy about the progress we've made. And whether or not Jordan Love is the guy, I mean, there's a lot to love about this team. Again, wide receivers, tight ends, offensive line, running backs, the defense pretty much across the board with the exception of safety, um, defensive line, edge rushers, linebackers, and corners. There's plenty to be excited about. Hey, Ryan, it's your Jersey Mike again. Uh, I think this is like the third time I've fallen in the past two days. Sorry. Right. Um, anyway, uh, I'm listening to the pod this morning, and we're talking about the, the Anders Carlson thing. Um, you're getting pretty passionate about it, which I, I, I get, but I want to want to talk about this for a minute. Um, Rich Passaccia has got this. You need to you need to believe, trust and believe in the process. Okay, Jersey Mike is by the way all in on this whole football team. Jordan Love gets an A for yesterday's performance. Did, he might have said B, but I think you said A. An A for yesterday's performance. Anders Carlson's going to be just fine because Rich Passaccia is going to fix him. I appreciate it, man. I wish I could be all in on on uh on all that but i'm 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 absolutely not there yet well um, like you said there's no other kickers on this this roster right now and i suspect that we're not going to get any kickers on this roster and it's only going to be Anders carlson and the reason being is that i'm i'm not positive okay but i'm pretty freaking sure that the reason andrew Anders carlson missed those two uh extra points is because his mechanics were off. You look at the field goals that he made before that and the, the extra points that he made before that, and his mechanics looked pretty good. And then somewhere towards the end, I forget which one it was, but it looked like it was a little wide right, but it still went through the uprights and it was good. And after that one, his mechanics kind of fell apart. And so this is the same thing that happened um, to him before. And 
I, I, I know what the issue is. He just loses his mechanics for a second. And that- yeah, but that's not a good thing. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like, I, you know, I mean, Jordan Love missed, but it's because his mechanics suck. So, no big deal. It's honestly a very rookie kicker thing to do. We need to trust in this. Daniel Carlson had a very similar problem. The Vikings, they, they had him, okay, and he turns around and he misses three out of four field goals, I believe, during the regular season, and they just got rid of him, right? And I don't believe anybody picked him up the rest of that year. And then Las Vegas picks him up, and he turns the Jets on. I believe during that time, Andres, or, uh, Daniel Carlson was practicing, and he fixed his technique. And Rich Bisaccio was a huge reason for part of it. So let's just trust the process. He's going to have to make the mistakes, right, so we can correct them. And he's a rookie. And he's coming off of an injury. And he hasn't necessarily been practicing well, you know, up until the draft. He hasn't been practicing kicking right. And up until he got actually in the room with Rich Bisaccio, he didn't practice kicking right. So let's pump the brakes. Let's trust the process. And we're going to have a good field goal kicker. we just a good kicker in general. Anyway, go back up. Well, I, I, I know what you were trying to say. Not I was kind of giving you crap. But as far as, because I think I, they were talking about it on, on the broadcast or somebody was talking about it. I heard this uh, line of thinking in terms of, I, I think they're changing his mechanics. And so he's trying to adapt to kicking a different way. Um, but again, a couple things. Number one, Talk to Rich Passacci about trust in the process because he went and was spitting in his face. He was so angry. Um, beyond that, though, I, again, and I, I've already said, th- this may get fixed at some point. That's fine. I have no reason to believe this is going to be fixed by week one, and that's what scares me. Week one, week two, week three, week four, week five. The other thing in general is that sort of line of thinking is very similar to Bears fans talking about how they know George, Justin Fields is a good quarterback. How do they know? Well, they had bad wide receivers in a in a bad offensive line. Okay, but how do you know he's good? That's my question. Well, I'm, I mean, look what he was able to do with the guys that he had. He didn't do anything. That's the problem. So the the point is, you can't argue a positive just from negatives. You know, you you can't take the excuses and say therefore it's going to be good. Maybe he's going through this whole thing with like a transition. Okay. Is he a good kicker? Well, I don't know, but he's going through a transition. Okay, well, what's going to happen when we get on the other side of this transition? Is he going to be a good kicker? Well, I don't know. So the the problem is, again, I don't think he was a very good college kicker. Um, he was horrific from longer distances, especially. Um where I say he hasn't made a 50-yard field goal since 2019. I mean, he has since since training camp, but whatever. Um, so I, I, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a lot of positive to work with other than, you know, trust Rich Bisaccia. But I understand Rich Bisaccia and Brian Gutekunst and all these guys are, are human beings and they make mistakes. And um, I know what the thought process was. I understand that the thought process is, I've, I, I've known this guy since he was a kid. I knew his brother. And, um, you know, we fixed his brother so we can maybe fix him. So let's bring him in. Let's see what happens. But that doesn't mean it's automatically going to happen. You know what I mean? I, I, I get what you're saying. I know you're not saying it's automatic in terms of let's just wait and see. But I don't have much patience. This is a big freaking deal. You're missing extra points and we're just a couple weeks away. So either tell him, forget all this mechanic stuff. We'll work on it next year. Just go back to what you were doing before so you can at least be the, you know, semi crappy kicker you were in college as opposed to the horrifically crappy kicker you're becoming as you try to go through this transition period or i don't know because this this is this is a freaking disaster right now but um i don't know i uh yeah i i i appreciate the appeal and i'm sure anders certainly does as well but i will not pump the brakes <laughs> at all and i uh we, we, we got to hit the gas, in fact, because the season is rapidly approaching here. Um, I'll tell you what, I would like to take one more call. However, considering this was just sort of a test run and whatnot, uh, I do kind of want to get out of here and just make sure that any of this actually even worked. We'll see. But um, 
again, it was a little bit clunky just because I've never done this with a camera in my face and everything else. Usually I can pause it and kind of gather my thoughts. And I couldn't do that, but 608-501-0718 is right over here, the number to call if you want to do that. Otherwise, Packernet Podcast, you can scan that actually with your cell phone and it'll take you right where you need to be. So go ahead and do that. Otherwise, have a good night. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.